High Tide, HIT Ice Talk, just released their financial statements yesterday. Things are looking strong. One of my top picks, huge revenue gains, still not quite there with some of their metrics. They're still netting, net earnings negative. Let's break down and take a look at this. I actually just looked at these guys about two weeks ago. I wanted to kind of put a prelude out. They're one of the first stocks to start reporting in the new quarters simply because their months are just off a little bit. So this begins things and hopefully the repeat from what High Tide can do, we'll see throughout the rest of the cannabis industry. Let's jump in. Here we are looking at HITI stock. And I, like I said, I did a video, uh, it was about a week and a half ago. High Tide was trading at about a buck 60. It's shot up over two dollars, as you can see. Um, so the, the the video wasn't too long ago. The information I have now is the new financial releases, and I've always liked High Tide. I think they're going to be a great company. I think M and A activity with what's shifting down here in the United States, they're probably going to get involved with other companies. I think Raj is doing a great job up there. This is one of the better run companies. One of the things I like most about these guys. Take a look at this revenue. They had one dip last quarter. Other than that, every single quarter is increasing, increasing, increasing. Man, you got to love that. These guys are building businesses and growing revenue. Awesome. Hit a new record, of course. It's kind of, it's a broken record. Hit a new record. Hit a new record. Hit a new record. Gross margins. So the industry is at 45%. I did a video a little while ago and I took a look at all collectively revenue, gross margins, operating profits, operating margins, operating efficiencies, breaking everything down, EBITDA profits and all that stuff. And I asked the question, where is the broader market? Uh, these guys are below average when it comes to gross margins. Now they've got their cabana club and that bites into margins. Um, but boy, does it grow revenue. So it's one of those things that if they get economies of scale, if they continue to grow revenue to a certain point, will they get their gross margins moving higher and higher? And that's really kind of one of the things that I've always wanted to know, but I've not been able to get any kind of answers out of. This is where I think they need to really kind of see something because sub 30, if they are at 30 and they hit 40, if they hit 45, which is average, that's a big dollar amount for the bottom line. I mean, this is, this is these are big numbers. Given that, however, they run a pretty tight ship up there. Um, the average is about 45%. So whereas they're not earning as much or keeping as much from a, a product cost basis, they are saving on a uh, operating cost basis. So for those who don't know what this chart is, this is operating efficiencies and you take operating costs, you divide that over top of total revenue. As revenue continues to grow and grow and grow, if that top line it remains the same, this chart slides lower and lower. You're looking between 15 to 20%. So they're pretty close actually. They could get there pretty soon with the continued revenue growth that we keep seeing. Awesome. EBITDA, solid. Enough said. Net earnings, not enough. Enough said. If you, if they were to get to 45%, that extra 15%, this right here would spike up considerably. So on the one hand, it's an economies of scale kind of approach. These guys are trying to um, push forward with big revenue, keeping their costs as low as possible, and through economies of scale, get to higher gross margins and, and break even. They're already running a really well tight ship. Like I said, Raj is doing a great job up there. Big growth, uh, low costs, but that gross margin is where that's that last variable. Total equity starting to trickle a little bit higher here. Uh, they don't really lose too much money on a quarterly basis. So as they grow the business themselves, their debt service load is not going to be too uh, daunting. So 2023, they're looking for about 350 to three, 
355 to 360 million in US dollars. This is a Canadian company in revenue. Then 403, then 450. These are revenue expectations, uh, analyst expectations, my apologies, for 24 and 25. I don't create these. So it's it's collected from a few different sources. Um, I don't have the answer as to if they continue to push to 450, will that get them to the economies of scale that we're looking for? But if you read through some of the things, these guys believe that they're going to get their net earnings positive pretty soon. Given that, however, stock market sort of liked the news. There's a big spike to begin with um, over the past couple of days. Then things started to sell off. If you go backwards, you can see that their previous quarter, they popped up from a low and kind of went sideways. Prior to that, for no real reason other than the U.S. was doing something, these guys spiked up again and sold off. So high tide HITI stock does some fun things. Now, I got a question posed to me on my forum. Great resource for you guys to pose questions to me. I read everything on that thing. And people are constantly dumping information on there. And honestly, I, it's for sometimes it's tough for me to keep up. But there's a lot of information that gets put on there. Make sure you stop by. The forum's free for everybody. Stop by and contribute all you want. Um, the question is, what do I think about Germany? These guys are announcing that they're going to be moving more internationally. And I keep, first off, I look at MSOs here in the United States and I think to myself, you're way behind. Look at Europe. But they're also simultaneously sitting there saying, there's so much opportunity here in the United States. I think these companies really need to kind of look at both areas. Um, Germany, something like 84 million individuals in that country, they are flipping to adult use legal. California has half that many people. That's how big Germany is. California is only 39 million. So it gives you an idea as to how big this potential is. Uh, Canada, by the way, only has 35 million individuals in that country. Uh, in that in that country and high tide is moving in i think that's a great idea i don't know we're still waiting to see pen and paper as to what germany produces for their new law it's passing it's moving through it's probably going to be fairly liberal that there's just going to be a lot of opportunity there keep in mind 84 million people that's a lot of opportunity my first take on Germany is simply this. Once Germany goes, all the other countries are next. It might take some of the more conservative uh, countries time to get going, but they will eventually, even if it's 5, 10, 20 years out. It's going to happen. So companies that are getting their foothold in the door in those countries are going to do very well. Clearly, High Tide has the uh, has proven that they can grow revenue. So if they take their business model to, I mean, that's two and a half times bigger the population. If they take that model and they move it to uh, Germany, you have two and a half times the opportunity. With the U.S. moving the way they're moving, I do expect a tremendous amount of M&A activity. High Tide, of course, if they can get into Germany and really substantially put them build a footprint there. I've always said High Tide, just because of the type of company it is, probably a, a, a takeover target at some point. But if these guys get into Germany and really get established and the United States continues to lag in getting out of the United States, but just paves this country... I, I honestly think a lot of these companies should pri over prioritize other areas. But high tide could really establish themselves, then turn around and buy themselves an American USO, uh, MSO. It's not entirely crazy. These guys are going to go to Germany and take this model. You saw the revenue growth. These guys know how to do things. Raj is running a great company. Yeah, they'll get to economies of scale at some point and get to 
profitability. But there's two and a half times more people in Germany. So that could really start taking off. It'd be interesting to see how all that plays off. So to answer to the uh, individual who posed that question, I think it's awesome. I think this puts them way out in front of all US MSOs who were stuck waiting, was it 74 days to go until they're federally legalized and can start making these kinds of moves. But a lot of these companies could have started the process of getting into Europe earlier. They didn't. Or they could have gone up to Canada and started acquiring sm smaller companies up there to build that infrastructure. They didn't. That's my take on that. Nonetheless, HITI stock, there's not much going on in the U.S. that would really push high tide stock higher, but it is moving higher. There's nothing that goes on in the U.S. that affects anything going on up in Canada. It's sort of a guilt by association. I figured this would happen. Uh, I talked about it countless times in countless videos. I wouldn't be shocked if this if high tide stock kind of moderated, but I've always loved this stock. If you're looking to buy one, this one, I wouldn't give you too many arguments against. They're not profitable now, they will get there. Nonetheless, tons going on in what's going on within this industry. Make sure you hit that like and follow button. Thanks so much for the comments, helps the channel out. Uh, it is growing rapidly. Um, I'm putting out content on as many stocks, even the small ones. Those small ones, man, they're, they're diamonds in the rough. Make sure you hit that like and follow button. We'll see you in the next video.